when my night was born. Does the world start spinning? Love me every night. Do you recall Eric Benet, that dreamy tower of chocolate finesse who left Halle Berry's heart in a thousand pieces? And let's not breeze past that voice. Smoother than butter, right? That man could sing the alphabet and have you floating up the romance nirvana. Eric Benet had it going on. Today, we're about to dive headfirst into the whirlwind of drama that's got Eric Benet's name all over it. Why did her ass have to look like that, Lord? You did Man, not have to Lord, do that. Lord, you made this. You did that. Born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Benet started singing in a church choir at a young age. Yeah, Benet was a church boy. Who would have thought? He went on to start a band with his sister and cousin called Benet. When I was originally signed, I was signed with my sister Lisa. We were a brother-sister act. I was always used to looking over and seeing my sister there when I was on stage, seeing my family there. That didn't take off like they expected. Benet went on to focus on a solo career. If at first you don't succeed, right? Finally, Benet got his breakthrough in 1996 when he released his debut solo album, True to Myself. The album simply announced to the world that Eric was not just talented, but he also got those vocals on lockdown. He had us all at hello, but one was not enough. By his second album, he had garnered himself a cult following for his hugely successful single, Spend My Life With You. Today, fans rave about that song being the perfect song to walk down the aisle to, or use as a first dance song a testament to Eric Benet's talent and vocal prowess. With that album, Benet was catapulted into the superstar stratosphere faster than we can say hit single. Benet was known to perform barefoot. Once I got my solo deal, I started to have to perform by myself. I was the stage fright. When you are used to looking over and see your family member and all of a sudden it's me out there, it was like I'd be backstage a little debilitated, just like stage fright would, would, would come on me like that. So I discovered one day that if I just took my shoes off and went out on the stage, I relaxed. I felt at home. And a byproduct was, of that was women, apparently, I must have had a good foot day or something, and they'd be like, oh, look at his feet. I was like, oh, y'all like this shit? Okay, I'll keep doing it. He still gives us huge bohemian vibes, and his barefoot reputation has aided that. Even though he accidentally discovered it, Benet admits he's come to love um, it. There's such a thing as called grounding and earthing. So basically grounding is the science based upon the fact that the earth is just one big battery full of negative electrons. We as human beings are basically electric beings. We're full of positive electrons. But when we walk around with shoes on all the time, especially rubber sole shoes, we are insulating ourselves from uh, negative electrons, which balances our body and reduces inflammation, makes us healthy, makes us sleep better, makes sex more boy, oy, oy, oy. So basically, I've since discovered, which I didn't know back then, that shit just keeps me healthy, it keeps me young, makes me feel like I'm 20 years younger than I am. At least an hour a day, I will walk around outside barefoot, in the dirt, in the sand, in the grass. With several more albums over the years, Benet's music has been characterized by its blend of contemporary R&B with elements of old school soul music, earning him several music billboard chart toppers and Grammy Award nominations too. In addition to his music career, Benet has also dabbled in acting, and his acting career saw him featuring in shows like Real Husbands of Hollywood all about, whoa, whoa. and Glitter with Mariah Carey. He had it going on. Where do I even begin with this juicy piece of gossip? You'd think someone with a voice as smooth as butter as Benet's would have a love life that's all roses and champagne, right? Well, think again, because it's been anything but. Let's kick things off with a real tearjerker. Eric lost his dad to cancer. Just when you thought the universe might cut him some slack, Benet and his girlfriend, Tamia Stauff, welcome a little bundle of joy, India, into their lives. But tragedy strikes again just as they adjust to diaper changes and sleepless nights. Tamia, in a twist that feels straight out of a heart-wrenching movie, is taken from this world in a car accident, leaving little India without her mommy at just 15 months old. The word on the street is Tamia's passing left Benet shattered. And why wouldn't it? Despite their split, she was the mother of his child gone too soon at the tender age of 25. Just when you thought our boy Benet's heart had taken all the hits it could, 
fate throws him a curveball in the form of none other than Oscar Queen Halle Berry. Yeah, you heard that right. They bump into each other, and even though there weren't immediate fireworks, they got to emailing for a whole year. It's all very you've got mail if you ask me. Eventually, Halle falls head over heels for our Spend My Life With You serenader. So what do you think? Is love in the air for real this time? Or is it just another plot twist in Benet's soap opera life? Stay tuned because it seems like this roller coaster is far from over. All is going great and the pair got engaged in 1999 and hitched in 2001. Hallie is so in love that she adopts India, Benet's now 10-year-old daughter. It's serenades, public declarations of love, and everything that has us swooning. Like that wasn't enough, Hallie goes on to make history and wins an Oscar for her role in Monsters Ball. Thank you so much. Thank you, my husband, who is just the joy of my life. And India, thank you for giving me peace. Hallie feels so empowered after this win, and who wouldn't? She was young and getting it. It was 10 days after the Academy Awards. I was on the top of the world. Mm. Career accomplishment. I had a wonderful husband, beautiful daughter. I thought this must be what having it all is. However, all of that was short-lived as a mere 10 days after that win, a magazine article alleges that her beloved husband had been caught with his hand in the cookie jar just two days before she won that award. What's worse? Benet accompanies Hallie to the awards and looked up at her with proud, doting eyes as she tearfully gave her acceptance speech. And then 10 days after that, this article comes out. And the article said? That Eric was having an affair with a woman of his past. I didn't even ask him if it were true. I said, I'm going to sue this magazine. I have yeah. had it. Yeah. I'm going to spend all my money. I'm going to own Star Magazine. Yeah. I was done. I just got into sue mode. Yeah. And about a week later, he finally saw that I was in sue mode. And he said, I need to tell you something. That article is true. And it's heartbreaking because yeah. I had a perfect marriage. I mean, this is one of the kindest men I think I've ever known yeah. on many Sweet. levels. I just couldn't understand yes. why so and um come to find out that was one woman he came to london where i was shooting bond and i knew we talked about this one woman and i just knew that something wasn't right it wasn't it my instinct just said there's more because once he got that off his shoulder he still seemed sick right and he still seemed despondent he still seemed just like something more was wrong. Because mm -hmm. I thought, okay, this happens in marriage. I signed up for the long haul. Many women have done it. I can deal. Let's talk about why you chose to go outside the marriage. You yeah. know, what is it? We can fix it. The next two weeks of my life, he stayed there and this vomiting happened. And I found out there was woman after woman after woman after woman after woman. Nobody who knew them and their relationship could wrap their heads around any possible reason why Benet would cheat on his gorgeous wife with not just one, but multiple women. And then I realized he had a sickness. The only thing that made any sense was that Benet possibly had a sex addiction. It's possible that Benet gives us a hint into his dark secret with his highly controversial song Redbone Girl released in 2012. And I love all women, if you know what I mean. In this song, he describes his experience between the sheets with a fair-skinned sister. That tune ruffled everyone in their grandma's feathers as he was accused of racism. But Benet didn't get why. Some people may have mistakenly interpreted the song as me saying that's my preference, but nothing could be further from the truth. The song is just about my experience with one woman. Just like Chocolate Legs was about my experience with one dark complected woman, and I love all people and women. <laughs> Bottom line, Eric Benet is a man who loves his women. Whatever the case, it seemed like the man attracted controversy like bees to nectar. Anyways, we digress. Faced with the glaring possibility that her husband had a sex addiction problem, Hallie was willing to work through the raw, gnawing pain of her heartbreak and fight for their marriage. Thankfully, so was Benet, who agreed to go to rehab for his problem. And he did just that. After rehab, they tried to give their marriage another shot, but any trust that Hallie had for Benet was blown to smithereens. Their divorce was finalized in 2005. In an interview with People magazine in 2005, Benet says, We tried to rediscover this groove of feeling comfortable and safe and trustworthy in the relationship. I was very much in love with my wife, but I personally could only contribute 50%. Ultimately, what was the end of us was she just couldn't trust me anymore. You can't blame her for that. There exists the possibility that Benet was simply ill-prepared for that shade of limelight. People don't understand this, bro. There is no man on this planet 
granted, who works at Home Depot or who's working at Wells Fargo right now, if you throw him in this situation, if you just throw him in the whatever you want situation, it will kill him. It, it will suck the life out of him. And so it's like you have to be in a certain mental, emotional preparedness, uh, which I was not. But like I said, it will take some years and you have to live with some consequences. Some losses, some yeah. consequences. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, wow, I need to reevaluate a lot of shit. More recently, Benet also insists that he was not a sex addict. I think when it comes down to the actual whole concept of sex addiction, that's not me and that was never me. Right. Basically what I'm saying is I kind of had to make that move in order to try to make the personal situation. I did not want to make that move, but it was something that was like, you do this, or it's a wrap. Whatever the case, Benet has taken full responsibility for his actions. Like, and anytime it's yeah. on a public stage, it's, it's not only times. magnified a million times, but there's a narrative that they want to tell right. to, you know, now it's clickbait, but it's like oh. to sell magazines, yeah. to do this. So things are spun a certain way. And then on the very tiny nucleus of what's happening on the inside, there are details that no one else knows and maybe I'll never share, but it's like, it ain't what y'all think. Mistakes right. were made. I've taken accountability Absolutely. for what I've done. I've grown from, from that. Man does. But yeah. any celebrity out there who's dealing with that relationship and the press shit, that's a hard thing. And while there's nothing wrong with manning up and taking responsibility, remembering that there are consequences, big and small, is also part of the deal. One of those consequences for Benet includes that time when Jay-Z released the song Kill Jay-Z. In it, there's a little shade with Benet's name on it. You almost went Eric Benet. Let the baddest girl in the world get away. In response, Benet tweeted, Hey, yo, Jays, just so you know, I got the baddest girl in the world as my wife, like right now. Oh, yeah, Benet got married to Prince's ex, Manuela Testolini, in 2011, and they've welcomed two beautiful girls since then. Yes, there will be consequences for actions, but ultimately, everyone moves on. All thanks to Benet's music and acting careers, his net worth has grown steadily to an estimated $10 million in 2024. Benet also does a handful of charity work. In fact, He's part of several nonprofit organizations, including In a Perfect World and Mission Save Her. We can all agree that fame comes with a price, and if that's right, Bonet has paid his dues in full. His journey to fame has been an editor's dream and a publicist's absolute nightmare. But through it all, while continuing to serenade us with his sexy, silky voice that gives us sufficient eargasms, he has shown us what it means to bounce back with sufficient grace and finesse. One thing is sure, Eric Bonet time is far from over because he's clearly not done with making the headlines. So buckle up, folks. The ride has only just begun. We hope that he is doing better with his relationships now. What are your thoughts about this cutie from the 90s? What is your favorite song from Eric Benet?